Okay, this is our geometry review part three for the year 2021. I'm picking it up with question 27. 27 says to determine the amount of wrapping paper needed for a rectangular box. Uh, Ryan finds the surface area of the box, how much wrapping paper is needed if the box measures 12 by 2 by 4. First thing that we want to determine is what are we talking about with surface area? Because there is a difference between surface area and lateral area. What is surface area? Um, yeah, so it's it's all sides, right? So imagine you know if you were spray painting an object, wrapping paper is a really good way to look at it because is there ever a side of a box that you're not trying to wrap with wrapping paper? No. Although wrapping paper is kind of somewhat of a bad illustration in the standpoint that what we're talking about, there should be no overlap. Like it's purely just the area of the box. Okay. So these are easier for me if I begin by kind of drawing it. Because there is a formula for this, but even if I don't know the formula, I should still be able to kind of common sense figure it out because a box is going to have six sides. If I find the area of all six sides and add those areas together, then I have everything that I need, right? So this says that it's 12 by 2 by 4, okay? So in order to find surface area, the simple formula is, if I don't have this wrong, perimeter times height plus two times the area of the base polygon, okay? So perimeter would be that distance around the base, okay? So 12 plus 12 plus 2 plus 2. So 12 plus 12 is 24, 24 plus 4 is 28, okay? So that's giving me 28 times the height, which is 4, plus 2 times the area of the base polygon. So that would be 12 times 2, right? So 2 times 12 times 2, okay? So 28 times 4 plus 2 times 24, okay? What's 28 times 4? Anybody? 56, 28 times 4, 112, okay? And then 2 times 24 would be 48, right? Okay. So then we just want to do 48 plus 112. 12, that 2 would make that up to 50. So it would be what, 160? 160 inches squared. Now, what's in the answer key? Is that the answer? Double check for me. Make sure we use the correct formulas. 160 inches squared works. Okay, so what if I can't, what if I get to the test, I have a brain fart, and I can't remember pH plus 2B? What do I do? Find the area of every face. Very good. So for that, I'm going to erase this, okay, and just see what we got. All right, so we've got this right-hand side, which would be 2 times 4, right? And we have two of those, so 2 times 2 times 4. Plus, okay, we would have our bottom base, which would be 12 times 2. So that would be 2 times 12 times 2. Okay, and then we have our front and back face, which is 12 by 4. All right, so 2 times 12 times 4. Okay, 2 because we have 1 on either opposite side. So 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 2 is... 16, 2 times 12 is 24, 24 times 2 is 48, uh, 12 times 4 is 48, 48 times 2 is 96, okay, so 16 plus 48 plus 96, is it 160, all right, so you see how we can get the same answer with the formula as we can with just using some common sense. Okay? All right. All right, verify that NQ is parallel to PR. Okay, we want to verify 
that NQ is parallel to PR. And how we're going to do that is that if PR, okay, let's see if I get this right, is proportional, the side lengths are proportional, okay, then that means that PR and NQ are going to be parallel to one another. Okay, so you can set this up a number of different ways. 16 over 12 uh, equals 8 over 6. Okay, can I reduce that? If I take 16 divided by 2, do I get 8? And if I take 12 divided by 2, do I get 6? So it's proportional, right? What's the answer key answer say here on 28? I guess I can scroll down to it. 28. Let's look and see what our answer key answer says. Yep. Um, okay, 12, 16, 12. So they use a little bit different proportion, but reduces, everything reduces down to 4 thirds. 4 thirds. Okay, because they're proportional, that's the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem. Okay. So if it's proportional, then they can be parallel through this. Okay, so that may be something you want to brush up with. Okay. Okay, let's come back up to 29. Okay, that was, okay, 29. Name the inscribed angle shown in the circle below. Well, we actually have two inscribed angles, okay? We have this angle is an inscribed angle. So you could name that, you know, EFG or even HFG. We also have this angle right here, which we would call HGF. So this might have been a multiple choice question um, that had the multiple choice options removed, what was the answer here? E, F, G. So they're looking for this one here, E, F, G. Okay. But there are more than one inscribed angles. Okay. All right, classify the three-dimensional solid. should be a rectangular prism. Okay. We don't have enough information to call it a square prism or a cube. Um, closest we can get to this is a rectangular prism. Hopefully that was the answer. Okay, good. Okay. 31. Triangle ABC has vertices at given points. Uh, DE is a mid-segment of ABC. We want to find the coordinates of DE. All right. So really, this is as easy as finding. D is going to be the midpoint of AB. Does that make sense? I mean, uh, let's see. So 2 plus 3 divided by 2, 6 plus 2 divided by 2 is going to give you D. 2 plus 3 is... 5, 5 divided by 2 is 2 and a half or, or 5 halves. Um, 6 plus 2 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. And that kind of makes sense. You can see um, that right there already. We also need E. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to do what? Negative 2 plus 3 divided by 2 and 1 plus 2 divided by 2. Negative 2 plus 3. Okay, 1 divided by 2 is 0.5 if you want to. 1 plus 2 is 3 divided by 2 is, okay, 1 and a half. Okay, 
which makes sense, right? We can kind of see that it's up one and a half. It's about half over, okay? So those are the two coordinates of those points. You just use the midpoint formula twice, okay? Questions there? All right. Or don't. Okay. 32, we're coming back to 30, 60, 90 triangles. You've seen multiple 30, 60, 90 and 45, 45, 90 triangle questions, which should tell you that you're going to see those questions on the test. You need to be familiar with it. All right. Um, the short side of a triangle, of a 30, 60, 90 triangle is opposite which angle? 30. So what is the short side on that triangle on 32? 20. 20 is the short side. Okay. What is the relationship between the short side and the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is what to the short side? Twice as much. Okay. So that means that y should be what? 40. Okay. Now the tricky part is always the 60 because the 60 is how much, how many times bigger than the short side? Okay, it goes 1, 2, radical 3. Okay, so it's radical 3 times bigger. So this would be 20 radical 3. Okay, do we follow that? Okay, good. Okay, so find the values of x and y. y equals 40, x equals 20 radical 3. Okay. And it did want it in simplified radical form. So if you go to use the, you can use the Pythagorean theorem if you know that y is 40 to find x, but you're going to have to have it in simplified radical form, which is a little bit more than you might think. All right, question number three, find the perimeter of a rectangle with coordinates 2, 0, 1, negative 4, negative 2, 1, negative 3, negative 3. Give your answer in simplified radical form. It says find the perimeter. So what's the total distance? So... We could put this, probably easiest thing to do is to put that on a coordinate plane and find your distances. Okay. Or we can use the distance formula four times. Okay. It's probably, honestly, a little bit faster to use the distance formula four times than it is to draw a giant grid, plot all four points, and then try to count up and over and use the Pythagorean theorem three or four times. You know what I mean? Okay. So let's try this. We're going to obviously be going from A to B, okay? So that would be 2 plus what? Or sorry, 2 minus. 2 minus what if I'm going from A to B? 2 minus 1 what? Squared plus 0 minus negative 4 squared, okay? Okay, 2 minus 1 is, 1 squared is, okay, 0 minus negative 4 is, 4 squared is, okay, so we got 1 plus 16, 1 plus 16 is, okay, so we got square root of 17. So one distance that we can go ahead and hold over here is we know square root of 17, right? Okay. All right. Let's find the distance from B to C. Okay. Parentheses what? 1 minus 1 minus negative 2 squared plus negative 4 minus 1 squared. Okay. What's 1 minus negative 2? 3. 3 squared is 9. Okay. Negative 4 minus 1. Negative 5. Negative 5 squared is. Okay, so we've got 9 plus 25. 9 plus 25 is 34. Okay, let's come over here. 34 is 2. I could divide that by 2 and get. Seventeen, right? Seventeen. So really, it's just square root of thirty-four, right? Because seventeen's prime. 
Does that make sense? Okay. Let's go from we've done A to B and we've done B to C, right? Let's do C to D. Negative 2 minus negative 3 squared plus one minus negative three, okay? Negative two minus negative three. One, one squared is one. One minus negative three is four. Four squared is 16. So I get square root of 17 again, right? So there's another square root of 17. Notice that they did tell me that this is a rectangle, correct? So what does that mean that the other length is going to be? The other length would be A to D, right? What would it be? If it's a true rectangle, the opposite sides should be congruent, right? And I should get square root of 34 again. So the perimeter, okay, because you're adding up those links, right? But I can only add or I can only combine like terms. So what's my final answer here? Once it in combined and once it in simplified radicals. Two radical seventeen plus two radical thirty-four. Put that in parentheses and say well, I guess that's I mean that's really it. You don't even necessarily need to put it in parentheses, but if we were going to, because they didn't give me anything else, I'd put units out there because it's perimeter, it's length around. Does that match the answer key answer? So this is 33. Four radical 17. Okay, and I think that that probably comes from. Notice how that this this is two radical 34, and what we realized with this is that there's a two, right? So two radical 34 would be the same as what radical 68. Yeah. Okay, so if you had radical 68 for some reason, right, you'd get 234, you'd get 217, correct? And there you'd be able to take out 2, you'd be able to take a 2 out, right? Okay, and that would leave you with, what, 2 radical 17? Okay, well what's 2 radical 17 plus 2 radical 17? 4 radical 17. Okay? So I'm glad we checked the answer key answer because that, uh, that helps us out a little bit on our understanding of it. Okay? Questions? None? Okay. All right, last question on the review. In the figure below, AB and AD are both tangent to the circle. We want to find the perimeter of the quadrilateral ABCD and to find out what type of quadrilateral ABCD is. Okay, if I know that AB is 15, what do I know that DA is? 15. Do we know why? Because tangent lines drawn back to the same point will be congruent. Okay, now if this is 10, right, what does CD represent? What type of line is that? It's a radius. So then what is CB? 10. So if they're just asking me to find a perimeter, it's what, 30 plus 20? So perimeter equals 50 inches. Okay, does anybody know what shape that is? It's a kite. Okay. Okay, and that's probably one of the most forgotten quadrilateral types is the kite. Okay, that's every question on the review. Um, I think we might have skipped a few that nobody missed, but if you want to go back and look at a couple, we certainly will, but I'm going to stop the video here, okay?